Our story begins with a clumsy young teenager, Morikawa Kakone. She is a normal young girl with the most vivid of imaginations. You see, in her dreams, Kakone is not a normal girl like in the real world. In her dreams, she is the princess of the Kingdom of Heartland, Ancient Heart. The kingdom is ruled by an old king who is obsessed with making cars. He believes that happiness can only be achieved by making cars and has his entire kingdom create cars. All the people of the country are involved in one way or the other in making cars. There are so many cars in the kingdom that if you have a day shift job, you have to leave home at 5 a.m. just to avoid traffic. If you don't have a car, you are considered a degenerate and are pretty much forced into buying one. There was racism even in her world. In such a technologically advanced kingdom, the princess is somewhat of an outcast as she can perform magic. She possesses a magical tablet with the help of which she can bring objects to life and give them a heart of their own. She even manages to bring her stuffed toy, Joy, to life, as well as bring another bike into life, too. The magic she possesses can create great things, but the ministers of the king fear that if magic takes over, their science would no longer be of any use. One minister, in particular, Wontanabe, has his eyes set on the king's throne and wants the princess eliminated at any costs and forces the king to put his witch daughter in a glass mansion. Suddenly, Kakoni wakes up. In the real world, Kakone lives with her father and her stuffed doll, Joy, just like her dreams. Her mother has already passed away several years ago in an accident and her father is the only living relative she has. He, however, is so reclusive that he barely talks with his daughter. The most they talk is in their messages. The man is a genius mechanic and programmer but wastes much of his talent by helping out old senior citizens who can barely afford to pay him. It's almost the year 2020 and Japan is ready to host the Olympics this year. The government has assigned Sejima Motors, the biggest motor company in Japan, to create auto-moving vehicles for the athletes to appear in on the first day. This is all over the news and is advertised as the next big step for Japan. Kokona doesn't care, she just shuts the TV and heads for school after bidding her father goodbye. As Kokona leaves for school, she stumbles upon his childhood friend, Morio, who studies in Tokyo and had returned back to the village for his summer vacation. Morio tries to act a bit cool and tries to ignore Kakon, but she forces him into conversing with her. Back at school, a clumsy Kakon falls asleep again. She goes back to the world of Heartland where her magic tablet has been confiscated by the king's minister. As the little princess sneaks into the chambers where the tablet is kept, a strange monster called the Colossus attacks the country of Heartlands. To protect the kingdom from such a threat, the king had created three monstrous machines called the Engine Heads. As the princess watches from the balcony, she realizes that these machines could never take down the Colossus, since it was an alive being while the machines were run by really, really slow humans from inside them. As the engine heads fail miserably and get beaten by the Colossus, the princess notices a pirate heading to fight the Colossus alone. It was her father from the real world, but she doesn't know him here. Ancient grabs her tablet and the vehicle to which she gave life and immediately rushes to the pirate's aid. Ancient manages to reach just in time to save him from the might monster who had overpowered him. Back at home, in the real world, Kakon's father, Momo, helps an old man and fixes his truck. He even adds a cool auto-driving software so that he can travel from one place to another in ease. However, Momo only takes charge of the flat tire he had fixed and doesn't take any money for the software. Just then, he gets a call from somewhere asking him to hand over his tablet and prepare to face them in court. Momo ignores the threat and heads to his wife's grave, taking Joy with him. He pays his respects, places the toy on her grave, and confesses that he's scared. He asks himself why on earth his father-in-law wanted the custody of Kokon now after so many years. Just as he was about to leave, the local cops come around and take him into custody. Back in school, Kokon is informed that her father was taken away by the police. She immediately rushes to the local police station, but her father's not there. She remembers that he had told her she would visit her mother's grave that day, so she goes there next. There she finds Joy laying around, and when she picks it up she realizes that the toy had, inside of it, her father's tablet. She takes the toy back home and wonders what could have happened to her father when suddenly the doorbell rings. She peeks through the door and realizes that the man who was behind it looked somewhat like Watanabe. Just before she could let them in, she gets a text from her father. He sends her a photo of Watanabe snooping around behind him and tells her not to trust the evil man. He further tells her to stop him from getting the tablet at all costs. When the door doesn't open for a long time, Watanabe commands his men to break open the door and the goons enter. 
They snoop around the house for the tablet and Kakon. Watanabe manages to find the tablet inside Joy, but Kakon expertly hides inside her blankets for long enough. Watanabe immediately heads to the airport, leaving a man outside Kakon's house to see if the girl is around. Just as Watanabe leaves, Morio comes to Kakon's place looking to see if she was okay. Kakon takes him quietly to the garage and the two get on Momo's designed bike. Morio is a bit skeptical to drive as he doesn't have a license to drive a bike yet, but Kakon forces him into driving. Morio turns out to be a pretty good driver and they quickly make their way to the airport and Kakon sneaks in alongside other travelers. She notices Joy hung alongside Watanabe's bag and quietly tries to steal him back. However, Joy is tied to the suitcase and so she is forced to steal the suitcase as well. As soon as she gets the items, she rushes outside and despite being followed by two fully grown men, she manages to run away and get on the bike. Morio then drives her to a nearby secluded location. The two check out the items they had retrieved and Morio tries to see if there was any contact for Kakon's father there. He finds a chat app for the mechanics all over their village and they decide to leave a message there for her father. Just then, they find Watanabe's card from his suitcase and realize that he was a worker of Tsujima Motors. Coincidentally, Kakon's mother's maiden name is also Tsujima. She finds this amusing but decides it best to forget and goes to sleep. Morio goes to sleep eventually as well. When Morio wakes up, he finds himself in the world of Heartland. He was in Kakon's dream. He immediately finds her in her ancient heart form and the two are informed that the pirate friend of ancient, Peach, was taken captive by the king's forces. The two then realize that the world in the dream was somehow connected to the real world and get on the bike Ancient had given life to and fly away to Peach's rescue. Back where Momo is kept captive, he receives the message sent by Kakon on the chat app, but before he can reply, the two detectives who had taken him into custody snatch the phone away. They demand to know why he had stolen the code from Tsujima Motors, but Momo is adamant that it was Tsujima Motors that had stolen the code. When Morio and Kakon wake up, they are already inside Osaka, several hundred miles away from their home. Morio cannot believe his eyes, it's almost as if the dream had come true. He checks the bike they were just in and realizes that it had auto movement abilities, meaning it could travel on its own. Elon Musk must have watched this movie a couple hundred times. As the two take shelter in a nearby restaurant, Morio gets a call from his father. He informs them that some mysterious men had been snooping around Kakon's house. He was telling him that Kakon was the granddaughter of the chairman of Sejima Motor. The chairman wanted to get to the tablet because it was stolen by Momo. Kakon doesn't believe her father was a thief of any kind. Watanabe snatches the phone and warns Kakon to give back the tablet if she wants her father to be safe and sound. Kakon, however, tells him that she would just go ahead and meet the chairman herself and clear the air. Just then, they notice some men from Sejima Motors snooping around nearby. Morio programs the bike to head back to their home while they go to the train station, expertly avoiding the men's attention. In the train station, however, they realize that they don't have enough money to get to Tokyo. They do have the option to take money from Watanabe's suitcase, but Kakon doesn't want to stoop so low. With no other choice left, Kakon once again checks the chat app and texts her father that she is on her way to Tokyo to save him. She also relates that she doesn't have any money to take the train when suddenly a woman arrives with some tickets for the train. Amazed and happy, the two hand Watanabe's briefcase to her and ask her to give it to the police. Inside the train, Kakon decides to test the chat app once again and asks for some lunch, and this time again some lunch is magically brought to them by the stewardess. After having lunch, Kakon once again goes to sleep. But this time in her dreams, she is no longer Princess Ancient. She watches as the Princess and Peach sneak into the last remaining engine head, hoping to give it life. But the soldiers present there shut down the main engine at the final moment. Ancient climbs to the top of the engine head to manually start the machine as Peach holds back the soldiers. She manages to start five of the six engines, but on the final one, she stumbles as the machine moves. She almost falls down, but is grabbed by Peach. But as she holds on, her grip starts to loosen. The princess turns out to be Kakon's mother, Akumi. Akumi, with her dying breath, tells Peach to look after Kakon. Her hand then slips, and she falls beyond the engine head to her death. Kakon realizes that the story she saw in her dream was actually of her mother. She was never the princess. Her mother was. Her father had told her this story when she was little, and she thought of the princess as herself, but it was never her story. Her eyes water as she comes to this realization, and she is now determined more than ever to meet her grandfather. Just as they reach the Tokyo station, they are once again confronted by the same Sejima Motor employees. Morio decides to hold them back as Kakon rushes to the company. The three men actually turn out to be against Watanabe's schemes. They reveal that the automatic vehicles they had created had failed, and Watanabe wanted Akumi's code from her tablet to create the perfect automatic vehicle just like Momo had created. 
Morio heads back to their home and tells Momo as he is released that Kakone had gone to Tokyo. The two immediately head back. On the other hand, Kakone heads to Tsujima Motors' grand office in hopes to meet with her grandfather, but she is ridiculed at the reception for claiming to be his grandchild and escorted outside. Fortunately for her, Tsujima himself comes outside to get some fresh air, and the two finally meet. Tsujima doesn't recognize her, and Kakone doesn't really reveal her identity either, but the two end up in a conversation about Akumi. Akumi was a brilliant scientist who wanted to create AI which could run the cars on its own. However, Sejima was too stubborn and only wanted to create old generic cars. This had created a rift between them, and Akumi had fled with Momo. She had made the man promise her that they would have nothing to do with Sejima Motors ever again, and so he had never heard from her, until the day she had died. The guilt was rooted deep within the man, and now this Olympic he had vowed that the company would make AI cars. This was his colossus. Just then, Kakon's dream world and the real world intermix, and her grandfather turns into the king. He was determined to defeat the Colossus on his own. The man then walks away before Kakon could say anything. Just then, Watanabe arrives in his royal uniform and takes her captive. He had never planned to use the codes from the tablet. The man had planned for the chairman's cars to fail at the Olympics, and then he could take over with the approval of the board. He throws away the tablet down the edge before him, but Kakon jumps to grab it. She hangs by the edge of the wall, but just then her father, or Peach, in fact, comes to her rescue. The king takes Watanabe into custody after realizing that Kakon was his granddaughter as she carried the same stuffed toy that he gave to her daughter. The Colossus attacks once more, but this time, Peach manages to use the last remaining engine head along with the code from the tablet to defeat the Colossus. He takes the remnants of the beast to space, so that no one in Heartland is affected. Just as the beast dies, he starts falling from the sky. Kakone rushes to her father's rescue. In the real world, however, she was the one hanging from a ledge in the Tsujima Motors building. When Watanabe had thrown the AI, she had launched herself to protect it, and was now hanging from the top of the beam. Her father held her arm, trying to get her back up, but she suddenly starts slipping. Just then, the automatic bike Momo had created using Akumi's code arrives and manages to rescue them both by securing a large air balloon under the fall. The AI had become sentient of sorts. Finally, all is well. Kakon manages to reunite her father with his father-in-law. Several days later, the Olympic events is a success, and Sejima Motors managed to make automatic vehicles that are used to carry the athletes on the first day of the Olympics. Back at their home, Sejima, Kakon, and Momo live happily together. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.